Hi everybody, it's Stuart Hillard here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's YouTube video, I'm calling this a skill builder. Um, and today I wanna to talk about how to prepare a quilt top for quilting and how to actually layer your quilt so that you get the very best and really professional results. <music> So what I've done here is I've prepared like a little sort of mini quilt. It's just a little stripy quilt. Um, but I want you to imagine that this is actually a whole quilt top because um, it illustrates the principles really, really well. So when you've made your quilt top, um, usually that's where the instructions end in a magazine or usually in a book. Um, it just tells you to then layer and quilt as desired and that's it, you're on your own. But I wanted to go through how to get your quilt top prepared prior to layering and then how to layer it so that you end up getting really, really great results. So the first thing is you finished your quilt top. You're really excited, you finally got this this masterpiece done and now it's ready for quilting and so you rush straight to quilt it. Well the first thing that you should do is to make sure that your quilt top is prepped and there are a few steps to that. The first one is to check the back of your work and when you're checking the back of the work what you're looking for is a couple of things. First thing is loose threads. Um, if you've got any loose threads, it might be construction threads that you forgot to trim while you were making your blocks. It might be the threads that are left when you've joined long strips of blocks together and maybe you forgot to trim those. Or it might even be that a particular fabric has frayed a little bit and you've got some, some thread on the back. You want to make sure that you trim all of those threads off before you start layering. It seems to be Murphy's Law that, um, you know, there's a navy blue or bright red thread that snakes across the back of a bit of white fabric in your quilt and you only spot it when you're halfway through quilting and it's right in the middle. If that does happen, um, a, a beading crochet hook, really fine metal beading crochet hook is really useful. You can wiggle it between the nearest seam allowance through into the, and then pull the thread out. It's like doing surgery, it's so much fun, but you don't want to do it too often. But if you trim all of the threads off the back of your, your quilt top, first of all, you will already be halfway to success. So that's a good thing. The second thing that you're looking for on the back of your quilt top is that all of your seam allowances are pressed flat. Now they might necessarily always be pressed towards the dark side or, you know, the way you intended, but just make sure that everything is pressed nice and flat. You might discover a seam allowance that you forgot to press. And that's often the case when you're joining long rows of blocks maybe into your quilt or you've added a border and we don't always remember to press every seam allowance. So make sure that everything's pressed flat because if you don't, what you'll end up with when you layer it and quilt it is you'll end up with a hump or a lump. And especially if it's a really long seam, that can be very noticeable and unsightly and really spoil your work. And there's no need for it to be there. Just check the back and make sure all your seam allowances are pressed. The other thing you're looking for with seam allowances, um, quite often it happens to us all, your seam allowance will be pressed one way and then within the same block, somehow it gets twisted and it's facing the other way. So there's a section halfway along that seam allowance where you get this twisted lump. You need to deal with that. The best thing to do is to just unpick a little bit of the seam where it's become twisted, an inch or two. Do them one at a time. If you've got loads, do them one at a time because otherwise you'll unpick five and then only remember to sew four. <laughs> and then when you're quilting it, I've done it. <laughs> this is why I know. And you'll discover a hole in your quilt. And you know, no one needs that. Unpick a little bit of seam allowance, untwist it, re-sew it, do them one at a time, deal with them all and make sure everything's nice and flat. And then your quilt top is almost ready to be layered. The last thing that I'd recommend, and I do this on all of my quilt tops before I layer them, is I stay stitch around the outside of the quilt within the quarter inch binding area. So if you're a dressmaker, you'll know what stay stitching is. If you're not, it might be a new term. Stay stitching really is basting using the longest stitch on your sewing machine and just sewing 
along within the seam allowance area or the binding area so that your, your stitching gets covered over either in a seam or by the binding. And what stay stitching does, it's often used on sleeve openings or on necklines on garments. It stabilizes the fabric so it doesn't stretch or pull out of shape. Now, when you're quilting a quilt, our hands are constantly kind of moving around and tugging and moving that quilt around. And the bit that really can suffer is the edge of the quilt and it can become quite rippled. If you stay stitch around the edge before you layer your quilt, you're really helping to minimize any movement. So I've just set my machine to its longest stitch and I am sewing about an eighth of an inch in from the raw edge of my quilt. And obviously this would be on a big quilt. This might be a hundred inch square quilt. And I'm just gonna sew within that quarter inch binding area around the whole quilt. And this is called stay stitching. And this is just gonna stabilize everything around the edge and stop it distorting. One more little line to do. And of course, don't forget to trim your threads. And then the last job of all, once you've done that stay stitching, is to give your whole quilt top one final press. You wanna make sure that the whole quilt top is really, really nicely flat. So if your quilt top is flat, again, you are already ahead of the game in terms of getting a really nice flat professional looking quilt. Okay, so that's our quilt top properly prepared, ready for quilting. Now then, in terms of our backing and our batting, you always want your backing and your batting to be a couple of inches bigger on all sides than the quilt top. Um, you always want some extra. Now I know this is gonna get trimmed off later and I know we often think, I don't want to waste fabric. I don't want to trim it off and throw it away. But when you're quilting a quilt, you've got to have something at the edges to hold on to. And it can be a space where you can travel your stitching to move into another area rather than having to start and stop your line of thread. And so it's really useful. But the main reason is because you need somewhere for your hands so that you can quilt right up to the edge. So it's important that you have a couple of inches of batting and backing on all four sides. What I've done now is I've laid out my backing fabric and my quilt batting uh, down on a table. Now I know a lot of people when they come to layer their quilts will do this on the floor. I don't know about you, but my knees aren't up to that anymore. I really, I can get down, but I can't get back up again. Um, so I much prefer to do my layering on a table. Now that doesn't mean that I can only make quilts that are smaller than my tabletop. Um, I simply do them in sections. So what I will do is I will lay my backing and my batting onto my available table, that be my kitchen table, for example. The center of the batting and the backing is down the center of the table. So all the excess is hanging over the sides of the table. And then I will layer up and I will pin or baste that section which is on the table. Once that's done, I can then pull the whole thing along and then continue the center. Then I can pull it over to one side and I can baste the right hand side and then I can pull it the other way and I can baste the left hand side. And that way I can baste my whole quilt, even a big quilt, using my kitchen table. It's a really, really useful way of doing it and much better for your knees. So I'm gonna show you first of all, how to baste your quilt together using safety pins. So when we do that, we need all three layers. So I've got my backing with the wrong side facing up. Then I've got my quilt batting on top of that and I'm gonna make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now, obviously if you're using you know, a large piece of batting, large piece of backing, you don't want it to shift while you're layering uh, the whole thing together. So use either some big bulldog clips or some tape or even weights on the side just to hold everything stable um, so that it's not shifting around while you're pinning or basting your quilt together. If you're doing something smaller like I am, um, then generally you can get away with just putting the fabric and the batting on the table. But sometimes I'll just put a little bit of masking tape just to hold the backing so that it is flat and taut 
but not stretched. You don't want it to be stretched. So backing on top, uh, batting on top rather, and then I'm going to put my, my pressed quilt top on top of that and centered and make sure it's really nice and smooth. Now I like to get, if there's anything like sashings or borders, I will get my quilter's ruler out and I will actually make sure that the fabric is layered straight. Because you know, fabric moves around, it shifts around. And the last thing you want is for a piece of sashing that you've pieced really nice and straight to end up getting layered slightly wonky and then quilted slightly wonky because it can really detract from the overall effect of your finished quilt. So once I've got everything nice and straight and true on my batting and backing, then I'm going to pin my layers together. Now I've got a little quilt over here, which I've already pinned to show you how it should look. And this is a table runner that's just waiting to be quilted. And I've used curved safety pins to pin these layers together. Now, I'll show you how I put them in in a second, but the first thing that I want you to notice is how many of them there are. I think it's really important when you're basting a quilt together that you can't put a clenched fist anywhere on your quilt top without touching a pin. If you can put your clenched fist anywhere on your quilt top, and not touch a pin, that is an area that could shift and move when you're quilting. And you're gonna end up with wrinkles and folds or tucks or distortion. And again, that is not a good look. And that's all about how you prepare your quilt. So make sure that you use lots of pins because they take an age to put in, they take an age to take out because you've got to take them out again. So they're not my preferred option. But let me just talk about why we use curved safety pins. So I'm just going to take one out. When we put them into our quilt, it's really, really important that we're not shifting the layers trying to get the pin out. And if we used a straight safety pin, we'd have to almost wrinkle the whole of the quilt up in order to get our pin through. A curved safety pin should go in and out again without having to wrinkle the surface of the quilt or the backing. Because remember, we can't really see what's going on on the backing until we've pinned the whole thing and flipped it over. And then if there's a wrinkle down the middle, well, no one wants to be around when that happens. So that would be pinning. You can also thread baste. So needle, cotton, always use white cotton for basting. The reason, um, often we use cheap thread for basting and cheap threads are quite often not color fast. So if you are gonna use a cheap thread for basting, if you always use white, um, that is not gonna bleed color onto your quilt, even if the quilt gets damp or in a humid environment or it's there for a long time. And uh, again, you're just gonna do like a big running stitch to hold all the layers together. But again, you don't want to be able to put your fist anywhere on the quilt without touching a line of basting stitches so they need to be probably two no more than three inches apart your lines of basting work from the center out and then work from the center out the other way and I like to do diagonals through the center as well just to be on the safe side but my favorite way of holding all my layers together is to use Odif 505 quilt basting spray it's a temporary fusible that will hold the layers together. Um, it washes out when you wash the quilt. Um, you do need to use it in a well-ventilated room or outside even, but I think it's a really, really good product. And the benefit of it for me is that it holds the quilt together everywhere. So there is no two to three inches between pins or between basting stitches. It is literally like I've got a gazillion pins in my quilt and I don't have to take them out while I'm quilting. So from a creative point of view, it's not interrupting the flow when I am quilting. I can just go for it. I'm not looking for pins. I'm not suddenly swerving to avoid a pin. Um, I can relax and I can enjoy my quilting. When you're basting using um, 505 spray, you want to just layer up the top with the batting. Okay, and I've got my backing in place. It doesn't matter in this example, but um, you can only layer two layers together at a time. You want to put the whole of the quilt top in place 
even if you're only basting the center. And then what you're going to do is you're going to peel about half of it back to expose some of the batting. And then you're going to spray the batting rather than your quilt. And you want to spray from around about 25 to 30 centimeters, um, maybe, I don't know, 12 to 15 inches in height. And we want a nice, even spray. Once we've got that down, we're then gonna drop the quilt back down and we're going to smooth it out. And we're checking that all of our horizontals and vertical lines are still nice and straight. And we're gonna make contact to fuse that in place. Once that's all fused, we're then gonna flip the other side up and we're gonna do the same again. So a nice light, even spray. I always tell my students, it's like using hairspray and it is a long time since I've used hairspray, but I do remember the theory. <laughs> and we'll just smooth that out so that it's nicely um, fused together. And it's as simple as that. Once you've done one section, you can then just move on to the next and just keep going. But that's gonna hold those layers together really well. Everything is perfectly flat. We're on track now to get a really lovely, flat, professional looking quilt. So thanks for joining me on this YouTube video. Make sure to subscribe and like the video and uh, come back and see me regularly. Till next time, goodbye.